These are the lecture notes for Chapter 9, Part A, Muscles and Muscle Tissue. Um, I am probably going to go pretty fast um, through these lecture notes because uh, otherwise it would, it would take forever to get through. But um, you can always stop and, and go back or stop and give yourself time to uh, write notes or whatever you need to do. Okay, so uh, section 9.1 is an overview of muscle tissue. Um, muscle takes up nearly half of the body's mass. Muscle can transform chemical energy into mechanical energy. And we're talking about all types of muscle, um, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle. We um, when we study muscle, we look at types of muscle tissue, the ones I just named, characteristics of muscle tissue, and muscle function. So terminologies, myo, mice, and sarco are prefixes you will see in terminology for muscle. Um, for example, the sarcoplasm is muscle cell cytoplasm. Instead of calling it cytoplasm, we call it sarcoplasm. There are three types of muscle tissue, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. The skeletal muscle tissue is packaged into skeletal muscles, which are organs that are attached to bones and skin. The skeletal muscle fibers are the longest of all muscle tissue and have striations. Skeletal muscle is also called voluntary. That means that you can consciously control when skeletal muscle contracts. The contractions are rapid. These muscles tire easily and they are very powerful. So keywords to learning skeletal muscle um, is striated and voluntary, striated and voluntary. For cardiac muscle, you only find it in the heart, makes up the bulk of the heart walls. Cardiac muscle is also striated, but involuntary. Um, the contraction of the heart is steady due to the heart's pacemaker, but the nervous system can control how fast if the heart rate speeds up or slows down. Now, keywords to remember for cardiac muscle are striated and involuntary. Smooth muscle tissue lines the walls of hollow organs, like the stomach, the walls of the intestines, the urinary bladder, the ureters, um, the airways such as the trachea, the bronchi, the bronchioles. Um, basically, any tube that moves air or fluid or solid through the tube is going to be lined with muscle tissue. So even your large blood vessels are going to be lined with muscle tissue in the muscle area of the blood vessel. Um, smooth muscle is not striated or non-striated. It's involuntary, and you're going to find it in the visceral organs of the body, which is referring to the um, Viscera refers to basically the abdominal, um, the ventral body cavity. It's organs within the ventral body cavity. Okay, so um, this is an image, an illustration of what skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle would look like under the microscope. Notice that um, Skeletal muscle is multinucleate, many nuclei per muscle fiber. They're very clear striations, and the um, muscle fibers are elongated. Cardiac is just a single nucleus, and the muscle fibers are branching. You see a branch here and here. Um, and then smooth muscle is just um, shaped like this, tapers at both ends, and has a single nucleus and is non-striated. There are four characteristics of all muscles. Excitability, which means the ability to receive and respond to stimuli. Contractility, this is the muscle's ability to shorten 
forcibly when stimulated. And extensibility is the ability to be stretched. Elasticity is the ability to recoil to resting length. Four important functions of muscle tissue is to produce movement. This does not just mean skeletal movement. We're also talking about the movements through the digestive system, um, the movements of blood through the cardiovascular system. So it also can, can be um, internal movement. To maintain posture and body position, to stabilize your joints, and to generate heat as they contract. This helps, helps us to maintain um, our constant body temperature. Okay, skeletal muscle is an organ, so that means it has different, it's made up of different tissues. It does have um, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. It's found within skeletal muscle. So it has uh, a nerve supply and a blood supply. And it has connective tissue sheaths that connect different muscle fibers together to form a muscle and then attachments from uh, the muscle to the bone. Each muscle receives a nerve, artery, and veins. So each muscle receives a nerve, an artery, and veins. The artery to supply blood to the muscle and veins to drain blood away from the muscle and remove um, carbon dioxide and other waste. Consciously controlled skeletal muscle has nerves supplying every fiber to control activity. Uh, contracting muscle fibers require huge amounts of oxygen and nutrients and need waste products removed quickly. What this means is that they need a good blood supply. The connective tissue sheath that surrounds a skeletal muscle um, has a name as well as the sheath that surrounds each muscle fiber. So um, from external to internal, there's an epimysium, epimysium, which is composed of dense, irregular connective tissue. It sur surrounds with the entire, surrounds the entire muscle. The pyramysium surrounds fascicles, which are groups of muscle fibers. And then each muscle fiber is surrounded by an endomysium. The paramysium is fibrous connective tissue and the endomysium is areolar connective tissue. So that's a loose connective tissue. And then this shows you the epimysium here. Um, which is dense, irregular connective tissue, the paramysium here, which is um, fibrous connective tissue, and then the endomysium, which is here, surrounding each muscle fiber, um, and it is areolar connective tissue. Individual muscles attach to bones and they attach to bone in at least two places. The insertion is the attachment to the movable bone. That's the part of the muscle that moves when it contracts. The origin is the attachment to the bone that doesn't move. Attachments can be direct or indirect. Direct means the epimysium is fused to the periosteum of the bone. Indirect means that the um, epimysium is fused with into a tendon or a sheet-like aponeurosis. So it's connected to the bone by an indirect connection, which would be a tendon, which is rope-like, and an aponeurosis is sheet-like. And then this is showing you a tendon. So this is an indirect connection. 
Okay. Um, and this is just a chart that shows you levels of muscle. This is the entire muscle, the fascicle, and the muscle fiber itself. All right, each muscle fiber or muscle cell is long and cylindrical, and it's multinucleate, contains many nuclei. It's actually a fusion of many, many cells. The um, plasma membrane that surrounds a muscle fiber or muscle cell is called the sarcolemma. The cytoplasm of the muscle fiber is the sarcoplasm. Um, there are glycosomes, which are found within uh, the muscle for storing glycogen. Muscle fibers remove glucose from the blood and store it as glycogen, which is long chains of glucose. And then myoglobin stores oxygen in the muscle. There are organelles that are modified called myofibrils, um, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is a modified endoplasmic reticulum, and then T tubules, which is a modification of the sarcolemma or the plasma membrane of the muscle fiber. Myofibrils are densely packed, rod-like elements. A single muscle fiber can contain thousands, and it accounts for about 80% of muscle cell volume. The myofibril is going to contain striations. It's going to contain contracting units called sarcomeres, myofilaments, which are actin and myosin, and the molecular composition of the myofilaments. And this is the anatomy of a skeletal muscle fiber, just a piece of it. Here's the nucleus. Um, this is the sarcolemma, which is the plasma membrane of the muscle fiber. Um, you can see that it, there's many nuclei, so it's multinucleate. Um, and you can see it contains lots of mitochondria. This shows you um, an example of what a myofibril looks like. Now, the myofibrils are composed of striations. And what causes the striations or stripe is a series of dark and light bands. The dark bands are the A bands. And listen, this is, um, this is how I remember the dark bands are A bands, is if I write the word dark like this, with a capital A, the dark bands are the A bands. And if I write the word light, let me do that again. Little L, big I, little G, H, T. With a big I, that I stands for I band. So the A band is the dark region. It contains the H zone, which is a region in the middle of the um, A band, and the M line, which is basically the middle of the A band, the very middle. The I bands are lighter regions, and um, they contain Z disc or Z lines in between the middle, um, the middle of um, consecutive light bands, I bands. Um, from Z line to Z line is a sarcomere, which we'll learn about in a minute. But what makes up these skeletal muscle fibers um, and the striations, this is showing you part of a muscle fiber. You can see that it's multinucleate, and the dark bands are the A bands, the light bands are the I bands. And we'll talk more about what they're composed of. A sarcomere is the smallest contracting unit of a muscle fiber. So each muscle fiber has many sarcomeres. One sarcomere contains an A band and half of an I band at each end. And it's the area between Z disc or Z lines. So from Z line to Z line is one sarcomere. Individual sarcomeres align end to end along the myofibril like boxcars of a train.